Hi, I'm Venus, and thank you for checking out my podcast today. You know what? It's been a little over a year since the first episode launched, and I'm really proud of how far it's come in such a short time. My hope is that I can continue to be able to share my love for this beautiful and sexy relationship dynamic. If you haven't already, please visit venuscuckoldress.com and you'll find a wealth of helpful resources, some sexy stories, and of course, the Venus Vault. The Venus Vault is a look into my encounters from behind the bedroom door. The vault has recently had a full renovation and now has longer videos and all sorts of fun goodies. So be sure to check it out at venuscuckoldress.com. All right, now let's get started so you can enjoy this episode. Here we go. Coming up on this episode of the Venus Cuckoldress podcast, it is likely your worst nightmare come true. And then she showed me some pictures and then she requested some pictures from me. So then after the pictures and videos were sent, I didn't hear from her. I got a text message and it said, hi, is this Joe? So I was like, yes, this is Joe. And then I get another text saying, this is Amber. So I sent her a text message back saying, I don't ever recall sending you my phone number. And then the next text message after that was like, it doesn't matter. The very next day, of course, I got another email. And it wasn't a list of people. It was the naked picture of me. And it was actually all, like, it was in the people that they sent me. It was actually my boss. And they had his phone number, his email. They had all the other office people, their phone numbers, their email, in this email. Oh and they were saying, God. if you don't respond, we're going to send this and we're going to contact your boss. So what is this picture worth to you? The very next day, this was probably the, the worst that could ever happen. So that video that I sent to this supposed Amber, they sent that to me saying, we're going to send it to this person if you don't respond in 15 minutes. And that person... It was just one name. It was actually my mom. Welcome to the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com to subscribe to the podcast and check out the Venus blog. And of course, if you love it, share it. Now, sit back, make yourself comfortable, and enjoy the show with your host, Venus. Welcome to this episode of the Venus Cuckold Just Podcast. I'm your host, Venus. Thank you so much for joining me for this show today. And what a show it is, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard the trailer already, and it is something very scary. My friend Joe is here to talk about his story about how he was blackmailed. And it is, oh my God, it's so crazy. The only thing more crazy than this story itself about the blackmail itself is about how he dealt with it. That really was like, holy shit. <laughs> bravery is the only thing that comes to mind. It's the only word that comes to mind. Just total, absolute courage, bravery. I'm just like, wow, mind blown. So this is a story that you have to hear. There's some really important information about how to prevent blackmail from happening as well. So learn from his mistakes. Now, this happened to Joe in 2018, but... 
This year, he joined the Venus Connections program, which is the matchmaking service for single women and single men who are looking for a loving cuckolding relationship. And so that's how I met Joe, because all of the applicants go through a one hour interview with me. And so he was telling me this story. And that's how I came across it. But For all of the single ladies out there, he is handsome, successful, educated, and obviously super fucking strong and brave. So if you want to talk with Joe and get to know him, you can go to venusconnections.com. And just so you know, there is absolutely no phenom, no gold digging, no using guys for money, definitely not blackmail in the Venus Connections program. That's why everyone is thoroughly screened in that program, men and women. Men of all shady, flaky sorts get kicked the fuck out. Women with all sorts of ulterior motives get kicked the fuck out. So it's actually a very safe place. Oh, and I wanted to just mention that all of the candidates who go through the Venus Connections program have to do a three-week course. Well, they've got three weeks to complete it. And the courses, people have been asking for a long time now, can we do the courses without becoming a member in the matchmaking service? And so I finally have been able to offer those courses to anyone who's interested, who's not going to be a member right now or not interested right now, just wants to learn about the courses. So there are two courses available if anyone is interested in taking them. The first one is uh, Loving Cuckolding Relationships 101. So basically that just dives into what loving cuckolding relationships are all about, what makes a really great loving cuckolding relationship, that kind of thing. And the second one, this one's really important for all the single guys out there. This one should be mandatory for you all because this one has to do with success with dating in the cuckolding lifestyle. And it goes into all sorts of information about why this has been so traditionally difficult to do online and what the barriers are and then figuring out what it is that you need to do. And this course, (laughs) unlike a lot of the courses that you see online, which are written by men, this one is written by myself with input from other women. And so you get to understand exactly what it is that we are looking for, exactly what it is that we want from you when you approach us, when you initiate a conversation with us, the way that you behave with us. This is basic shit that you absolutely must know. So that one is called Success with Loving Cuckolding Relationships Dating. And that one, like I said, should be mandatory for all the single cucks out there. If you want to learn more about Venus Connections or if you want to purchase those courses, you can go to venusconnections.com. One last thing before we jump into today's episode. All right, so Joe and I are going to be doing a Moan chat together. So this is going to be on the Moan app, which is a live drop-in audio app. Super fucking cool. I've talked about it on the podcast before. Love it so much. It is just like Clubhouse, the Clubhouse app, but this one is for sex. So sex positivity. So everything to do with sex, sexuality, it's completely open and inclusive for everyone. And it is just wonderful. So you can go pop on there. It's all live. So whatever, whoever's speaking at that time doing a presentation or just a chat or just some fun fucking shit, some sexy stuff, I don't know, you can go and listen in. So the moan chat will be Tuesday, April 12th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you catch it because like I said, it's live. It's not recorded. So you got to catch it at that time. So set a reminder on your calendar. And the link for the Moan app will be in the show notes for today. All right, it's time to dive into this fucking incredible story after these quick messages. Interracial, black and white, the beautiful and sexy relationship dynamic that we love now in a lifestyle clothing brand you can wear with pride. Don't sacrifice quality and comfort any longer. 
With Maison de Neige, you get both in fresh, empowering looks for every occasion, for everyone. From the streets to the sheets and everywhere in between. Check us out at MaisonDeNeige.com. Maison de Neige Couture, modern fashion for the modern revolution. Calling all sex and intimacy illustrators. Have we got an interesting case for you. Key Barrett, who wrote the book Locked in Love, is working on a new book and he needs your help. He's looking for 15 to 20 illustrations of sex positions where the submissive partner is locked in chastity. These can be very simple illustrations like an airline safety card or your own unique style. There will be credit, royalties, and a small compensation for each image. Find Key Barrett on Twitter for more details. Joining me on the show today is my friend Joe, and this is such a cool story that he has, a frightening story, but a very interesting story that he has to share on the show today. Uh, okay, so the the story of how I came across this was I was interviewing Joe for my matchmaking service. He's a member of the service. And um, in that interview, I ask all sorts of questions about uh, the me- the person, about who you are, what you're looking for and everything like that. And in that conversation came up this story and I was just like, holy shit. I have never heard a story like that before in my life. And I think that this would be a really great thing to talk about on the show because it is something that we're all afraid of happening um, that, that, you know, you're just like, shit, like, I hope that never happens to me kind of thing. But in this lifestyle, I have not heard anybody really talking about it that I know of that I can think of off the top of my head, any other shows or anything like that talking about this kind of thing. So welcome to the show, Joe. Thanks a lot for joining me. Say hello to the listeners. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy and I'm excited to share this story for sure. Um, It's like you said, wonderful. nobody really talks about it. So yeah. Yeah. That's why I was like, when you told me, I was like, oh my God, like, what? <laughs> it, it, it's true. It happened to somebody like this is so yeah. crazy. Okay. Let's get right yeah. into it. Ka, yeah. Start from the very beginning. Tell our listeners what yeah. happened to you. So, you know, everyone's sense of normal kind of went out the door in March of 2020, right? With the pandemic and everything. Mm-hmm. And you know, with my sense of normal, went out the door a year before that in March of 2019 as kind of when everything all started. And just kind of like a little bit of a background story on me and how I kind of got up to this point was, so in May of 2018, uh, I was married at the time and the, she likes to be called the was wife, um, instead of ex-wife, it's was wife. Um, we decided to just end our nine year marriage and we have two boys that are under the age of 10. And I, you know, our oldest was getting up to the age of like, he's going to start to remember things. So let's just call it what is, and let's just end our marriage. So Mm -hmm. that we made that decision of May of 2018. And, you know, I kind of stayed at a friend's house, but I bought my house in September of 2018 And it was kind of like, you know, throughout that time, I was just really enjoying, you know, the alone time with me and my boys and just, you know, having that, that fatherly, you know, normal time, I guess you could say with them. And it was a lot, it's a lot of fun. And so then I was like, okay, I'm going to start back up and dating. And so I joined a few web dating websites here and there. um, And, you know, I am submissive. I'm just naturally a submissive gentleman. And it's like, one of the reasons why the marriage did end was it's not solely that reason, but it's a part of the, it's one of the reasons why we ended our divorce. So um, it's very hard as a submissive guy to come across um, to try to find a dominant woman, you know, just the, the yin and yang trying to find somebody compatible. So I just put a little snippet in my dating profiles, like I'm a submissive, naturally submissive gentleman looking for a dominant woman. And that was just kind of my placeholder in all of my dating profiles. I didn't want Mm -hmm. it to sound sexual. I didn't want it to, you know, just, yeah, it's basically sound sexual. 
you know, because that's usually where, you know, that's always the first thought when somebody hears submissive. So, um, you know, I, I, and the reason why I did that was because I went on a date with a lady beforehand and she got very upset when I kind of like told her like, okay, so I am looking for a dominant woman. She got very upset that I wasn't upfront about it. So that's why I put it in the profiles. Uh, so then I met this one lady named Amber. And again, this was in early March of 2019. And, you know, we kind of, I guess you could say we somewhat hit it off. I wasn't head over heels or anything like that. It was just kind of a getting to know each other. And we, um, we kind of chatted on the, on the dating site and then we moved it to a messaging app. And, you know, that's when the whole conversation shifted to the topic of BDSM. And so she knew my name. She knew where I lived and she knew what I did for a career. She didn't know exactly where I worked, but she just knew broadly what I did for a career. So we, you know, we exchanged some obviously messages and then she showed me some pictures and then she requested some pictures from me. And, you know, I was, it, it was fun. It was exciting. You know, um, I'm not one to just upfront like many women get like a ton of dick pictures, right? You know, mm-hmm. it's, so she requested them and it was, you know, full frontal pictures of me and everything. There's no hiding behind it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just a couple. Um, and then I sent her a video that she requested. So, so then after the pictures and videos were sent, I didn't hear from her. I didn't hear from her at all. It's just like, I got ghosted, which I mean, at the time I was just like, wow, you know, I was like, okay. Um, but then again, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't head over heels, you know, it was fun at the moment and I just let it, I was like, okay, whatever, it's fine. So it's like one of those days where you always remember a, a moment that was happening to you. You remember the time of the day, you remember what it was like outside and everything. So it was a Wednesday and it was around 9 a.m. And this was three days after I had talked to this Amber lady and I just got in from a run. Like I said, it was 9 a.m. I was cooking up some eggs and my phone goes off. I got a text message, a direct text message on my phone. And it was from a New Jersey number. And it said, hi, is this Joe? And at first I was like, you know, I get a lot of text messages from a lot of businesses trying to get my business. So I was just like, oh, you know, it's just what it is. You know, it's just not in business. And then I get another text message from the same New Jersey number with my picture of just my face picture from my dating profile. And I was like, so my heart starts to kind of like race just a tiny, tiny bit. Cause I was like, this is weird. I've never had this happen before. So I was like, yes, this is Joe. And then I get another text saying, this is Amber. And I was like, so I sent her a text message back saying, I don't ever recall sending you my phone number. And then the next text message after that was like, it doesn't matter. And I was like, oh, (laughs) I was like, okay, this is fucking weird. So, so then I was like automatically thinking, okay, she must be like some kind of fin dom or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's not, it's not for me. So then I get another text message saying, are you ready to show your devotion to me? And I was like, okay, yeah, for sure. Fin dom. And I gave the good old Midwestern answer. No. You know, my text message. And then I sent that off and I blocked her on my cell phone. I'm like, I'm not going to deal with this. It's already weird enough that she somehow found my cell phone number. Okay, that's fine. So then an hour goes by and literally I was walking into the bathroom to take a shower and I get an email and not just in my personal, in my work email, I get a message saying, from I don't even remember the email address. Um, and the subject line was titled. I remember this was devotion. So I was like, "What the hell?" Oh and then God. in the body, yeah, in the body of the tech of the email was just like, "You can block me on your cell phone, but you can't block me on your work email." Are you ready to show your devotion to me? And I sat on the tub and I, my heart just started racing. I think I started sweating. I was getting angry. All these emotions were just running through me like crazy because this is my work email now all of a sudden. Yeah. So what else does this person, I, you know, I'm pretty sure, obviously her name's not Amber, 
you know, and I'm pretty sure it's probably not a lady. So I'm like, Oh my God, this is just, this can't be happening to me right now. And I was 39 at the time. So I was like, I can't believe this. I'm 39 years old and this is actually happening to me. I like, you know, it's like you're alone on this Island and you have nobody to talk to about this. Mm -hmm. And then I get another email from her or from this person. And I didn't, I didn't respond to the first one because I was just still in shock. I just didn't know what to think of it. I kept rereading it, rereading it. And then she was like, she, this person sent the picture of me naked. The one that I sent to the supposedly Amber. And it said, um, are you ready to show your devotion to me? I was, I, you know, I was just like, I cannot believe this. I just, honestly, I was like, I thought I was kind of ruined and done with. And so then I get another email because it, they were hitting me like, boom, 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 right after one mm -hmm. after another. And I was just like, I, I don't, I, I mean, I started shaking. I'm pretty sure I was having probably a panic attack at the time because, you know, I was just getting flooded with all these emotions. And it said, if you don't respond to this email, um, we're going to send this out to 20 people. And it had a list of 20 people that I knew. And those 20 people also very well know me, but they had all these names with this picture of me that I had sent to this. And, you know, I thought it was in private, but apparently it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So there, there it is the whole list of 20 people that I know. And I was just like, and then I, and so there's like, after, you know, all this whole ordeal, I looked into everything and there's like three rules that you never do. One is you don't respond. I responded actually. And I said, look, I'm going through a divorce. I've got nothing to give you. And that's what I said. Cause at the time the was wife and I were just weren't divorced because we we're just not in a hurry. It was nothing big or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I was just like, I just, I couldn't believe it that, you know, and that's when I think they knew they had me, my attention was when I did respond. Cause mm -hmm. in the end, I wish I had never responded. So I didn't hear from them after my email. And I was like, I got zero sleep that night. Cause I was expecting my phone to ring from one of those 20 people. Cause I was just like, this is, I mean, this is just, this is how it's going to end. I think, you know, this is just the way that I put myself in this situation. I should be ashamed of myself. That's how I really felt. Mm -hmm. So then the next morning, it was almost like clockwork. The next morning I get another email, same picture, a list of people saying, are you ready to show your devotion or we're going to send this out to these people? And it was a list of 30 people, 30 totally different people that I knew and they well aware knew me. And I was just, I didn't respond. I, I was just like, I was thinking, how long is this going to go on for? So then this is what really like, like just hit my heart. The hardest was just the absolute, this is just the absolute worst was when they sent me a follow-up email to that one the next morning and it was a picture of my kids and it was like one of my absolute most favorite pictures of my kids they were both together sitting on a couch and they photoshopped my x-rated picture with it and they had it they wrote on that picture saying look what daddy did and i was oh just God. like i was just like I, I, my tears were running down my face. I just felt fucking awful, just felt horrible. And I just like, I couldn't, like I was shaking. I was like, and that night I was going to pick me picking up my kids and I was emotional wreck the whole entire, probably that rest of that week. I was just never really, you know, it was just very, very hard for me to be with my kids knowing that this, they, these people put their picture together with, with my picture. And I was just like, I was just like, I, I just couldn't like day to day stuff. I couldn't really almost hardly do because it was just so hard for me to see that and to feel what was happening to me. So, so then I didn't hear from them at all and I didn't respond to them. And, you know, in that email, they said, what's this picture worth to you? And I was just like, I just felt like they were just waiting for me to come up with some dollar amount and yeah. they were just going to go from there. So then the very next day, of course, I got another email 
And it wasn't a list of people. It was the naked picture of me. And it was actually all like it was in the people that they sent me. It was actually my boss. And they had his phone number, his email. They had all the other office people, their phone numbers, their email in this email. Oh and they were saying, God. if you don't respond, we're going to send this and we're going to contact your boss. So what is this picture worth to you? I was like, I I, I was just like, I, 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 it's just more anger got out in me. Like, mm-hmm. I can't believe you're actually trying to drag me down f- for, for this. I cannot believe you're actually trying to like ruin me is what I felt. Yeah. Like, these people were just trying to ruin me. So I was like, I got to get ahead of this. I got, I can't just sit here and live day to day as they send me, you know, 30 people at a time, 40 people at a time of like, we're going to threaten you to send this picture out to all these people. And these people were my friends. These people were my clients. These people were, you know, everybody that I knew from like high school. These were just everybody that I knew. So, so I was like, okay, I have to get ahead of this. I got to, I have just have to confess. That's just what it, what, what it came down to for me. So the first call was actually to my was wife, to my ex-wife. And I said to her, like, here's the deal. (laughs) <laughs> and I was just like, I can't believe I'm, you know, I was thinking of this. I can't believe I'm fucking doing this. I can't believe I'm fucking doing this, but I have to do it or else this is going to ruin me for sure. <laughs> so I called my ex-wife and told her what was going on. And she was like, you know, honestly, like from my end, this is what she said from my end, do not even worry about it. It is what it is. And what was really interesting was on those lists of people that she sent or this person that sent, her name never came up. So I was like, that's really bizarre. Cause that would, oh. you know, you would think that that would be the very first person that they would be sending. So, so then I was like, Oh my God. So I kind of thought more about that. Then the next call I had to make was to my boss. I actually called my boss and I was like, Todd, here's the thing. <laughs> I was like, you know, yeah, you know, I was like, I, I think I, the first thing I said to him was like, you know, I'm a good guy, right? <laughs> and he was like, of course, yo, you know that, you know, he's like, I'm, he said he was even dealing with a world of shit that day. So I was like, well, let me add on to that, will you? So I told him <laughs> that I have a lady. I, I, I honestly, I didn't go into the full story with him because I don't think he really needed to know the full story. I just wanted to say to him like, Todd, there is a lady here threatening me via email through my work email, threatening to send these compromising photos to you. And he was like, he took a long pause and he was like, Oh, oh he was like, is it anything you have to do with our business? I was like, no, absolutely not. And he was like, Oh, and he was like, and then he was like, well, I'm really hoping I get to see these pictures then. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> so I was just like, Oh, like the weight of like the world came off my shoulders from that because I was like, oh, thank God I have a boss who wants to see these compromising photos of me. You know, it's yeah. like, I was like, oh my God. So, so it, it felt like huge relief to me. And so then the very next day, this was probably the, the worst that could ever happen. So that video that I sent to this supposed Amber they sent that to me saying, we're going to send it to this person if you don't respond in 15 minutes. And that person, it was just one name. It was actually my mom. And oh. I was just like, I was like, how the hell did they get my mom? <laughs> like yeah. out of all people, how do they, how do they even, how do they even do this? I'm just like, oh my God. So I was like, I'm just going to have to do the same things what I did with my ex-wife and now my boss. Like I'm going to have to make that hard phone call. So I actually called my mom and I was like, mom, I got something to tell you. And my dad was on the phone too. Cause that's just what parents do. They jump on speakerphone <laughs> together when yeah. their child calls. And I was like, I have this lady here. I sent these her and I exchanged photos and now she's threatening to send this video 
a compromising video of me to you. And my mom was like, oh, Joe, I am so sorry to hear that. You know, she's like, that sounds just awful. And then she was waiting for my dad to, to pipe in. And my dad was all quiet. And, you know, he, my dad, he's a strong Vietnam vet kind of guy. And he was, he said, it's those damn Russians. I tell you, I knew it. They're probably doing something behind the scenes. They're, they're behind this. I just know it. And so I just felt a world of relief just talking to my parents about this and just saying, Hey, this is what might happen. You know, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. So I have my was wife who was just saying, don't worry about it. My boss saying that, you know, I hope to see these pictures and my parents basically blaming a whole nother country, you know, <laughs> on this. So it was, but, and then after that, I didn't respond. I only responded to that one email and I never responded to anything else. And I never heard from them ever again. So I think they just left the very last, you know, person that would just drive me over the edge. But luckily I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I was like, I've got to get through this because it's just like, it's only going to get worse is what I felt. And so that's kind of, that's just where it kind of happened. And I never heard from them again. I actually have no idea what these questions are, so you're going to be coming along the ride right along with me. The show is What Women and Other Wonderful Humans Want, presented by Dating Kinky. It's the show about how people connect in the right ways. I like the way that you're, you think about this, and I was wondering if maybe you and I could create some of these experiences. And the wrong ways. Hey, hey, share nudes. Wear nudes. I want nudes. Interviews with women and other wonderful humans from many sex-positive walks of life. New episodes come out every Tuesday on Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. Oh, I'm your host, John, otherwise known as Hi There, Catsuit. Yes, I'm a guy, but my curiosity allows me to ask the questions you want to know. So join me for What Women and Other Wonderful Humans Want, presented by Dating Kinky. And make sure you listen to the episode featuring Venus in the archives. Yeah. Okay. So, (laughs) so such a crazy story, but Mm -hmm. I love that you decided to just own it and just, you know, Mm -hmm. take that power away from them by just talking to these people and just saying, Hey, like this is, this is, what might happen. But how yeah. the fuck did you even come to that decision? Because that is not, I don't think, what most people would do. Most people would I, either pay money or yeah. go to the police. Like I w- I doubt anybody I, would actually do what you did. I I had to, I just felt like I had to get ahead of it. And that was the only way I felt that I was going to be able to get ahead of it. If I mm-hmm. file a police report, what is that going to do me? nothing. It's just, it just felt like to me, it just wasn't going to do anything because they still could be sent out. If I just felt like if I could just get the forewarning out there so they can at least say like, okay, here it is. He already told us about it. That's fine. Whatever. And that was Mm -hmm. the only way I could really come out ahead of this. And the way I found out was how they got all these lists of names, how they got my mom and my boss and everything is if you Google my first name, what I do for my career and where I live, I'm the number one thing that comes up on Google. So then they can wow. easily find my boss. They can easily find their contact information. And then that picture of my kids was the only picture that I put as public on my Facebook profile. And I did actually didn't know this was all my friends on my Facebook profile. This actually was made public. You actually have to go in there and mark them either uh, private or only to me or something. Yeah. I didn't know that. And that's where they got all of my friends, all of the people that were my friends or are my friends on Facebook. And then I think they just went through my comments and they saw my mom commenting as a mother would on, mm-hmm. you know, good job, Joe. I'm so proud of you. Like, you know, not many people would probably say that unless it was your mother. And sure enough, we yeah. shared the same last name, obviously. So that's how they figured out that was my mom. 
So I was just like, and it's just, it, it's, it's so like, like intrusive, you know, to, yeah. especially with my kid's photo. And that's what, that's what almost, yeah, it, it almost did send me over the edge. And if I didn't have like, you know, the, the years of experience of like, you know, like going through life, because one of the, one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to come on here and tell you this story was because we're seeing it day in and day out with like these 15, 16, 17 year old kids that are actually committing suicide over this because they yep. send out a photo, a compromising photo of themselves. And they think they, they truly do think it's the end of the world and they don't tell anybody. And that's what's really nerve wracking. Cause I just saw a new story. I just, cause I wanted to see like, cause I remember a 17 year old committing suicide in New York. And then I, when I Googled it, it was actually this 15 year old. And it was literally within a couple hours when he got that compromising message or the photo of himself saying, we're going to, you know, we demand, it was like $3,500 and he committed suicide over it. And that's, what's really scary is because now, you know, I have two boys that I am going to share this story with them eventually in time because it needs to be brought out there. It needs to be put out there and saying, don't, don't respond. It's not the end of the world. That's the biggest thing. It's just, it's just not the end of the world. So, mm -hmm. and the, the way I looked at it at the end was like, okay, yeah, these are compromising photos of me and compromising video of me. Like I'm not, I never said I was totally innocent. You know, yeah, I'm guilty of it. If you want to call it that. And they're probably on Pornhub now, you know? So it's like, I should probably go out there and try to find those pictures and videos and try to get some residuals from it. But you know, it's just like, but you know, it's, it's, I, know. But I know I so many other... my own, I keep finding my own videos on, on Pornhub. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> every so time it happens, I'm like, yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, I, I know so many people in my, my career field that have done 10 times worse than I have, and they're still mm -hmm. doing the same thing as what I do. So I'm like, at, in the end, it's like, yeah, I'll, I, f I fly the freak flag high, you know, and that's just who I am. And honestly, at the end of this, I came out a way better person, just like more mm -hmm. confident, more like, you know, at, cause I just felt like, you know, you guys, whoever it was, you didn't get me. You know, I'm, yeah. I actually confronted them kind of in my own way of like, you know, I came out just a better person. I'm not, I'm not proud to say I'm a cuck. I'm proud to say I'm submissive. You know, it's like, there's no shame about it, you know, and that's just what it is. And, you know, screw those guys that or is, whoever it was. And yeah, exactly. And the, those people were pros. Like that is what like yeah. you can tell they spent three mm -hmm. fucking days looking yeah. into every single thing about you they worked for mm -hmm. three days and to try to get money out yeah. of you at the end yeah. result and yeah. uh i just think it's amazing that you just were like fuck it i'm gonna own it <laughs> just yeah. yep. because i mean it would be it, it would be a terrifying experience for me i can't even imagine how i would probably mm -hmm. throw up honestly that would be yeah. my first reaction i would probably throw up but yeah. um i i feel like in the cuckolding lifestyle there is so much fear about people yeah. in your in your immediate circle finding out that like yeah. people are terrified of this like really yeah. really terrified i get it i completely get it but yeah. i have always wondered well what would really happen if somebody found out like what would really yeah. happen it would it be the end of the world that's why i loved your story i was like yeah. Well, fuck! It was not the end of the world. <laughs> no, no, it's I mean, really granted, not. You have I a mean, very good relationship with your ex-wife. Would that yeah. definitely help? I mean, that, if you guys have a does help. relationship, that would have been yep. really fucking bad. And yeah. and luckily, your your boss was cool with it, and he wasn't like I yeah. don't know some I don't know sermon giving it, church guy <laughs> or whatever. You know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. It had nothing to do with the, the, the place I work at or anything like that, or the company that I work for, you know, it, it had nothing. I mean, obviously it had nothing to do with it, but it's just like, but it's very like now, you know, my boss knows and it's very like, it is very, you know, you do put yourself in a vulnerable situation, but you know what, if they don't accept you for who you are, then either your bot or your friends, if they, if they can't accept you, then, you know, then they're really not your friends. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to, you know, I can, I always, you know, bring this up to people too. Like, you know, I, I have come out to some people saying, you know, I am submissive. I love a dominant woman. I just do. And they're like, 
you know, they, they sometimes say why. And I was like, well, my favorite color is green. Your favorite color is blue, but we can have an argument about it. But there's, there's at the end, there's, it's not an argument. Yeah. But I wanted to get this story out to you because I want people to share this story because, you know, at the time when it was happening to me, I had nobody to talk to. And I, yeah. I did not know if there was going to be a light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing. And I hope people do hear the story and just know that it's not the end of the world. There is light at the end of the tunnel and you are going to come out a better person for it. It's just, mm-hmm. you just are. And mm-hmm. it's just, it does break my heart though. When I see so many teens committing suicide, I mean, I saw three, four yeah. different articles about it and it's just, it's very hard to see that. It's a terrifying yeah. story, but there's a it lot to be terrifying. learned from it. So what yeah. do you have as like advice for people so that this does not happen to them to try to prevent this from happening? What's your advice? Yeah. So, I mean, my only like, so some of the advice is like, you know, don't, you know, if you're, if you're feeling hesitant about sharing pictures of yourself or whatever in any compromising positions or anything like that, then just hold off. The person will either understand or if they don't, and then they're not worth it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, so there's that. Um, And, you know, just really just get to know the person first and foremost. And I, you know, I, I always know like get the, you know, don't go on a chat app, just go straight to just text message. So you have their actual phone number. So right. you can do your own research on it. Um, there's a ton of apps out there that you can do a reverse number lookup. But at the end of the day, I mean, no matter how many precautions that you take, it still could happen to you. And that is kind of the reality, unfortunately. Um, you know, if I would have changed it up and did it differently, it still might have happened to me. I don't know. But, but you know, my another advice is just to don't be ashamed of yourself. Just Just be who you are. Mm-hmm. And if someone's going to try to use no it against you, you, then they're not going <laughs> to yeah. have any power. I mean, it's just like if they seriously try to use it against you, I mean, just just be you. That's that's all you can. That's all you can be. And, mm-hmm. you know, don't be. Well, yeah, this um, the fear of something like this happening is obviously very real for a lot of mm-hmm. people. Um, yeah. But it, it's one of the things that makes dating in this lifestyle so fucking hard is because Extremely. nobody wants to give out a picture of themselves. No. Nobody wants to give out information about themselves. And so yeah. you're never able to get past that first barrier of like, <laughs> well, how do I get to yeah, know this I person know. if we are both so private that we can't yeah. even get, exchange our actual phone numbers or a mm-hmm. picture? Like how how do you even like figure out if you're attracted to someone, if you have no idea what they look like and they're terrified yeah. to show you, it's like, so I, this is one of the reasons why it's been so traditionally so hard to get to mm-hmm. know anybody online on like, you know, FetLife or, you know, chat rooms or Twitter or whatever, yeah. like, you know, where people can stay anonymous. It's just, it's impossible. Nobody wants to take that risk. It is. So at least with the Venus Connections program, um, you have to it, like, mm-hmm. it's a process for a reason. Like you're going to share yeah. every fucking thing about yourself to me. And if you're too afraid for that, that is not the program yeah. for you. <laughs> yep. So you're literally, what's really, I force you to trust me. <laughs> <laughs> what's really nice too, is that you do vet everybody too, which, mm-hmm. you know, that does relieve a lot of like, I won't say tension, but just a lot of like not knowing, okay, is this person real or not? You, I mean, they've gone through the, the vetting process and stuff like that. So oh, yes, yeah. they are and it, real and everything. It filters, so. out. It filters yeah. out a lot of those people who either mm-hmm. aren't real, will flake, or are doing it for we- all sorts of malicious intentions. So yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. So at least there's an option now for dating where you can actually trust that whoever it is that you're going to have this date with is real yeah. and and is legit. I mean, I, I really do have hopes that it just becomes more of the normal of like people just like, okay, their, their sexual interest is this and this and this, and they won't be judged on it. And it's just like, yes. you can freely share out just a PG picture, you know, of yourself or just a face picture. And, you know, I mean, yeah, you can have culpable deniability over it. Um, <laughs> but it's just like, you know, I really do hope that, you know, they can just have these, the sense of like, uh, confidence that I have and like, yep, this is who I am. This is what I am. 
if you have a problem with it, then just go fuck off or something. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, just right yeah. off. Just <laughs> go fuck off. <laughs> don't want you around me anyway. Just fuck off. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I think that's really oh, so. wonderful. I, the fact that you've come out of that situation feeling mm-hmm. so much more empowered and so much more comfortable with who you are is wonderful. So I really appreciate you sharing your story with everyone. Well, thank you. Uh, for the podcast, because this is really, really going to be a fascinating show for a lot of people to listen to. So thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. For well, that. no, thank, thank you for having me on. I really do appreciate it. So, and if anybody has any questions, you know, I hope they reach out to you and stuff like that. All right, that's going to be it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. I sure as hell did. All right, don't forget, April 12th on the Moan app. If you want to join myself and Joe, we're going to have a lot of fun talking about this crazy ass story. Oh, and before I forget, April 8th, it's a Friday. That evening, there's going to be another special Pillow Talk event, a live event. Myself and a special cuck panel. It's going to be a sequel to the one we did back in January. So that's going to be insanely fun. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com if you want to subscribe to the podcast, learn about the Pillow Talk events, ask a question for the show, or visit the Venus Vault if you want to see what goes on behind the bedroom door. Now, make sure you check out Full Swap Radio. They have a new app, and every Tuesday and Thursday, 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. Central Time, you can find the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. Make sure you check out also I write for... ASN Lifestyle Magazine every single month. So check out my writing on there. And if you would like to follow me on Twitter, my handle is at V. That is going to be it for today. I hope you join me next time. Bye-bye. Hetero, the hookup app for oral pleasure. With Hetero, the pleasure is all yours. Hetero is the only hookup app designed specifically for oral pleasure. An inclusive space for people of all sexualities and gender identities. Grounded in safety, sex positivity, and enthusiastic consent. Hetero lets you connect based on a wide range of kinks and relationship dynamics, including cuckolding. Download the Hetero app. H-E-A-D-E-R-O on iOS or Android or check out our website at www.hetero.com. Hetero, going down in a town near you. Today, are you ready? Download the Hetero app now.